Uh, good afternoon. It being 4.02, I will call this meeting of the City Council's Committee on City Services to order. And note that present are Councillor Marianne Labarge, uh, Councillor Ryan O'Donnell, and myself, Councillor Maureen Carney. And we're just waiting on Councillor Dennis Bidwell. There being a quorum, we'll go ahead and get started. And I'll ask if there is any public comment. No. Okay. Thank you. So first off, I'll ask if there is a motion to approve the minutes of the okay. approve. Second. Okay. Any additions, corrections? Nice job, Councillor. Thank you. Very thorough. Too much detail. Uh, it's very helpful. So all those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, that passes. And I'll ask uh, counselors if we can um, maybe move up uh, the building commissioners so we don't have to wait around while we, well, plus we know that Councilor Bidwell may have the report on one of our appointees, so. Please, yes. Okay, thank you. I'll turn it over to Commissioner. So Louis Hasbrook, the building commissioner for the city, um, I brought a permit listing report, uh, sort of the most basic kind of summary of permit activity over the uh, past 12 months. It's uh, North Camp, we're busy. Um, permit activity has been going up pretty steadily um, for the last um, four years, and I, I. And as near as I can tell, it's going to continue to increase. We started um, back to where there's a lot of uh, new single and two-family housing um, starts, which is uh, unusual. It's, we have to go back until, um, I think, 2004 uh, before we could see the same number of new uh, housing starts. It, uh, and there's also multifamily housing between um, new buildings, um, uh, 40, 50, 60 unit buildings, um, renovations of existing buildings. Um, significant, uh, I'm, um, significant in number of new residential dwelling units. The, um, 155 Pleasant Street, 70 housing units um, should be finished by the springtime. We, will issue the uh, building permit for the lumberyard apartments and other 62 units um, sometime this week. Um, the preliminary proposal for another 60 units at, on Village Hill um, we'll probably see um, sometime in the spring. And in the background of all this, along with all the new housing, all the new um, single families at Village Hill, um, Emerson Way is another place where there's a lot of building activity and then infill development, the changes in the city zoning to allow um, smaller lots and um, and also more than one house on a, on a lot is really given a boost to the um, with you know infill development new houses um, I think that I think there's going to be within a year there'll be 12 new houses on Hankley Street all by itself um, four two families and then another four single families how many houses eight eight unit uh, no eight houses you said eight houses are those the condominiums the condominiums and then also um, one at one end and two at the other end and the proposal for another in the middle. Oh, really? Is that um, Street? Wow. Street. It goes between uh, it goes between Riverside Drive and um, Nonton Street. But places where um, you know perhaps um, the zoning like frontage went from 50 to 75 feet in the UR urban residential B district and then the zoning changes brought it back to 50 feet frontage which is one of the uh, a, a lot an awful lot of uh, early 20s um, subdivisions were laid out with 50 feet of frontage. The, I believe the ones that are on Bridgeway Road 
next to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, they're like squeezed the old, uh, which condominiums. One the, um, There's what? One, two, three, three. Bridge Road, Bridge Road, Bridge Road, Bridge Road. Next to the cemetery. Oh, St. Mary's that Cemetery. Actually was, that actually was a simple subdivision of land. That was a really? relatively large piece with frontage both on Bridge Road and Hatfield Street. Right. And they, you know, uh, two, uh, three, I think they ended up being all of them being duplexes, yeah, but each ended six up on them. a separate lot. Well, I don't think so. Yeah, two in each each um, unit. Oh, right. Yeah, six six dwelling units. Like there might even be another one on the table too. I think there were four buildings um, with with some garages. But that's another example of the infill development. Mm -hmm. um, they moved the it's a common driveway. It comes off Hatfield Street a little ways that. down on the corner. Uh, <clears throat> Shaw's Motel, um, six apartments in the big yellow building, and then three other duplex houses, um, one facing Pomeroy, two facing Bridge Street. Like mushrooms on the lawn after a rain, <laughs> in, the, in the summer after a rain. It, see, it feels like that. It's been yeah. an awful lot of them. Yeah, yeah, so. Which is, uh, you know, and it's renovations don't necessarily increase the tax base, but new construction certainly does. What about Laurel Park? You live there, right? Mm -hmm. You see constantly houses are up for sale, people buy them, and then houses are up for sale. Mm -hmm. it's, are there uh, any renovations going on in there? Um, there, um, Slowly and slowly over time, um, uh, the, the older houses are getting torn down and new houses are being built. Oh. Um, and it, right now, Laurel Park is affordable housing. I yep. mean, it's it's the most affordable, uh, you know, single family housing that you can find. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy a house in Laurel Park than it is to rent a place. Um, but people, you know, they're there for a while, they get established, and then they move on. Um, they don't stay for sale for very long. Um, they're absolutely limited to the footprint, and so there's an awful lot of very small houses. Yeah, I and saw that. It's not, um, at, at this point, it, it's not, um, it doesn't seem to make sense to, to do really small houses, like a, a 12 by 20 house is a very small footprint, and a lot of the older, a lot of the houses in Laurel Park are built on that original, it was actually a tent platform footprint. A long time ago, Louie, was that just used for summer? Mm -hmm. Not all year round? Now right. they're all year round, right? Yeah, most of them, 75, 80% of them year round um, and they're get the, the summer places are being converted um, I think out of there's a hundred units in Laurel Park a hundred separate dwelling units and I think 25 of them in the last 15 years have been torn down and rebuilt and of course when you tear down I think it looks um, pretty nice in there um, it's a it's a very close-knit community oh yeah um, big has time. To be because I have friends that live in there Uh, Smith College doesn't add to the tax base, but their their the renovation project at Nielsen Library is going forward, and they've started the demolition of the old building, partial demolition of the old building, and um, that'll be probably a two-year project. Um, on the library. On the library. Um, that's going to be a. a a struggle for the building department because it's it's going to end up over a course of two years it's probably going to be close to the same amount of work um, as as nearly one whole year so half again more activity yeah. for us um, you know we'll be down there several times a day doing inspections at the at the height of the um, yeah. con uh, construction And these numbers aren't 100% accurate. There's about three weeks when uh, n not in this report because we used a new piece of software and it didn't work out very well. So 
that we went back to the old piece of software, but I haven't figured out a way to um, to incorporate it. But the uh, the um, could I ask you a question, please? Can I talk to him for a minute about this? Certainly. You have on it building totals, the estimated cost, mm -hmm. the number of permits, mm -hmm. and fees paid, mm -hmm. and you still have a balance of thirty-nine thousand nine thirty-nine. What is it? Thirty-nine thousand six hundred. It's a mistake. It's a glitch. No, that's part say, of the reason we. Not right here. It's part of the reason. No, we we won't even enter a building permit until we have checked it. That's in. what I thought. And so that's part of why we wanted. To, it's the, the soft. This software worked. Um, it has glitches in it. That's one of the glitches. And because it's money, you can't just override it. Yeah. You know it. Right. It keeps very close track of it. Um, but the new software was better in some ways, but it wasn't as good in other ways. And so hmm. it's gone back to the drawing board. Um, we'll probably, we'll be trying it out again in January. Yeah, because I didn't think that was right. I hate to do, I hate to, I don't want to use um, spreadsheets because anybody can put anything on a spreadsheet. I, I would much rather print reports out of our Permit software, mm -hmm. but there are glitches in it. Well, thank you for explaining that. So, <clears throat> my question is if at any time, for example, you have 1,389 building permits mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. um, those could extend and typically do, uh, well, the average would be less than a year, but some would go beyond a year. Yeah, the bigger the bigger the project, the longer oh, they yeah. go on. Right, um, right. But typically, but but it wouldn't be. Um, so it would be about that many. You could you could estimate that many inspections, really, in a. I think building permits. Um, plus, you've got to go um, the numerous times. Yeah. A little less than a little a little less than three. Our our um, we estimate that. You take the total number of building permits, and and that there's about uh, 2.75 or 2.8 inspections per building okay. permit. There's about almost um, there's a little less than two for electrical permits, a little less than two for plumbing and gas permits combined. Um, but if you even just looking at that, if you were to say, for example, just looking at the two number for the electrical permits. You get 1,027, so that'd be mm -hmm. 2,054 inspections one person has to kind of cover in a year. Well, well he also has no We have, I mean, there's, there's, uh, there's uh, electrical, plumbing, and gas, and there should be three building inspectors. Yeah, um, okay. And, and there's two now, and um, we're, we're, work, we're working on getting a third one. Yeah. And uh, but it's over. It's 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 way past five thousand inspections a year, um, and this doesn't. This whole sheet is only the, the actual permitting, which is um, doesn't count the periodic inspections, the liquor license inspections, the um, all the zoning activity, you know, the emergency, you know, the, the call out fires, um, cars crashing into building type inspections. Right. When do you think you'll have your other position filled? Um, I don't know. I, I we haven't had we haven't found anybody that seems real suitable, um, and we may end up hiring somebody who's um, might only work for a few years. Um, might only what? Work for a few years, but who's got a lot of skills. Um, and or we may we'll post it again and see what kind of a response we get this time around. And posting it again is probably not till January first because you don't think it makes sense to post over the holidays. So when did you fill the other position? September. And we are, he's an ex. We have a, his name is David Roberts. He's. Uh, uh, Former uh, work with the fire services in 
Burlington, Vermont for 20 years and he's really knows how to do inspections and he knows a good bit about residential construction. Um, so it's working pretty well. well that helps you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't do it without that. And, and Chuck Miller is retired, but we, he, he's been back um, a little bit here, a little bit there, especially for plan reviews. So how do you handle, in your department, complaints? They have to be in writing, and we investigate them. And if um, we generally try to negotiate some kind of a resolution, just with discussions, but um, we, were, we were just talking about a, um, a situation where uh, two year, less, a little less than two years ago, we ended up in court, and we may end up going back to court again. So sometimes it goes um, unregistered cars. Oh, they're, it's getting ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now, Councilor O'Donnell had a couple of questions. Sure, thank you. Um, how are your department's responsibilities going for Williamsburg? You're still providing service. Yeah, we are providing services, and you know, we I do every year. I do a cost benefit, and uh, <coughs> we charge them around, you know, uh, thirty-seven thousand five hundred, and <coughs> we pay, and we've we've it, you know we've developed a sort of a cost per inspection. Um, and a cost per permit processing, and a, and a cost per um, zoning uh, complaint response, and and we're we're doing well with it. Uh, I don't um, I don't see any reason to let it go. Um, it uh. It's part of what keeps us able to have uh, the funding for three full-time full inspectors. Right. We also do, um, we do Williamsburg electrical permits also. Um, we do, um, and we do weights and measures for Amherst, um, Hadley, and Granby. Well, what about West Hampton? No, not West Hampton, and we used to do South Hampton, but they opted out of the program. I thought I saw in the Gazette with Chuck Miller's name in it. He, he was not, he was, he was the building inspector for West Hampton, but not through the city. That was his job separate from, separate from the city. I don't get that. Um, well, we, we have a, we have a municipal contract with Williamsburg to provide uh, in building inspection services. Um, Chuck Miller worked for the town of Williamsburg. I mean, uh, the town of West Hampton. Oh, okay. It's um, like his second job. I was a little confusing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it does sound like uh, you're going to be very busy in the next coming year. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you look at the past twelve months, um, cost of construction, the uh, the part that got stuck in the other software was about um, a, a, uh, about four hundred ninety thousand dollars worth of cost of construction. So it would put us over seventy million dollars uh, estimated cost for a year. And uh, we there's uh, I th there's a company that's tracking permit activity for. 13 municipalities and they break them into tiers and you know the city of Boston is and and then mass the state DCAM um, Div division of capitals and assets management um, Worcester and Springfield are in the top tier and then as the populations go down um, you drop to a lower tier we may well move from the third tier to the second tier just based on our construction activity um, it's we're, Northampton's more than, um, you know, than 28,500 population in terms of activity, it's more of a destination. And so there's a lot of people that don't necessarily live in Northampton who are in town during the day, and that's part of why there's as much activity as there is. Yeah, if I may, just 
just yes, what, what come, goes along with the change in tiers in terms of it's 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 uh, anything number good? I'll send the um no nothing absolutely nothing it's okay. it's in some ways it's just a ranking system yeah. and it's it's a little bit the way they asked they reached out it's done by a private company they reached out about four years five three or four years ago um, for, to a bunch of communities to see who would participate and they had some sense of demographics yeah. and then as people participated and I can send the reports around um, they come out every six months and they're usually about three months behind that'd be great thanks Sorry. No problem. It happens. I had it in focus for, but in my head it was five. Well, we were just hearing a report from uh, Commissioner Hasbrook, and what he showed us here is uh, kind of a breakdown of the anticipated escalated work for right. his department, given the. This is the uh, past 12 months of permitting activity for the city. So then, right now, there is not a balance. No, there's never a balance. There's never a balance. The, the 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 balance due got paid, but it was right at the transition between this software and the new software, and then we came back out of the new software. So that that thirty nine thousand shows as a receipt in the new software. Well, I'm glad I brought that up because yeah. looking so, at it. And those permits are paid when the uh, permits are pulled, we, not, not at the We don't even permit. enter a permit in the system until we have the fees. That's the way that we've, that we've done it. We have to refund occasionally a fee where, where a project you know, doesn't work out. But uh, no, we don't. it won't even show up in the system unless the money's been paid. Uh, um, just I had one more quick question ahead. about that. So you were talking about the increase in the urban residential zones, mm -hmm. um, and you, the example being the eight on uh, mm -hmm. Hinkley. Mm -hmm. Do we know what percentage over? I mean, is it do you have a ballpark of how many across the city, or um, is it a couple hundred? Is it that many, or? Uh, no, I think that um, no, I don't. We're, we're gonna Dozens, probably, probably going to be 50 new um, one and two family residential dwelling units over the in the in the in in, the, in a 12 month period in the whole city not in, in the those. whole city okay yeah. uh, and so there probably is going to end up being um, I don't know I don't know that's that's a hard one well it's it's difficult because the soft the the software we're using now, the old software, doesn't break it out very well at all. The, all that information is in a text field attached to a permit. You pretty much have to plow through, you know, like 500 permits to pick it out. The new software will do a lot better, but it doesn't work. And other, there's other ways it doesn't right, work. But to break it down into zone, that's actually something the planning department would probably have better access to and to know. No, it's thinking? unfortunate, but we're stuck with it. We're just, we literally are stuck with um, going through however many permits we need to go through, mm -hmm. hundreds of permits to break it out that way. And, yeah. and we could do ballpark estimates, but that's, I think, the only way we're going to do it. Because the this permitting software doesn't attach the zoning district to a permit. Yeah. It isn't that connection isn't mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. okay. Any well, questions? Again, my, my apologies for interrupting. You probably already mentioned this, but that that fifty mm -hmm. estimated new residential units. Where does that fit in the trend line of the last few? Years? We're got, we have to go back into the early two thousands to see anything approaching those kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. It struck me as pretty big. Right, it is. It's more and more in the 20s and 30s? Or even, um, or even you know, teens, 20s, and, and we tipped over 30, I think, um, for the first time in 2000. And uh, we, let's, we do fiscal year or calendar year, depending on who's asking, because, but, um, but the numbers are pretty consistent. But I don't think we tipped over 30 until last fiscal year. 
um, for, uh, un, uh, until you, unless you go back into like 2004. And that reflects some Village Hill activity too, I assume. It's Village Hill, it's, it's Emerson Way, it's, uh, and then it, the rest of it is infill development. And I really could be wrong on the amount of infill development. I just could be, I could have missed it because like you say, it's hard to pull it out. Um, a single family house, a new single family house is a new single family house. Uh, and we, and unless you actually look at that permit, it's hard to know where it goes. Well, given that we, there was so much work that went into changing that zoning and, um, Surprise! So there isn't a way, and that's how the planning department would get it by seeing what what building permits are called, or, or, unless it was some something that had to come before the planning board. No, it, I mean the, what they did is they changed it from the potential for um, for uh, special permitting to allowed by right yes. on properties that wouldn't have been buildable, um, mm -hmm. you know, in two thousand and early two thousand fifteen. Right. Um, so it doesn't come in front of the planning board. Right. And that was the big motivation for new software. You know, I mean, that we want, we need software that can better track our activity. We have a lot of activity, and, and this is um, awfully crude. This old, the old program is awfully crude. The old program hasn't changed much since 1998. I mean, it's really ancient for software, but. So this new, is new software that no, does. This, this is the old stuff. Oh, okay. The and, but stuff, the new software also does not well, it didn't cross work check out for other didn't work out for other reasons. Okay, one being that it can't uh, designate the uh, the which zone. No, it was almost impossible to input a permit, and that it was huh. equally difficult to get a report out of it. The way it tracked did did very well, except that um, wasn't ready for prime time. Yes. How are we doing as far as accessory apartments? Because I know when I designed that ordinance, mm -hmm. and when Tony was the building inspector, he mm -hmm. said so many people had applied. And I do know that on my ward, I have had people who have connected with accessories mm -hmm. on their homes for their in-laws or whatever. Mm -hmm. So how are we doing with that? Well, it's... Um Two things happened. Um, one thing is that, what, uh, well, let me predicate it by saying a, an accessory apartment is no different from a two-family house in terms of the building code. It's only the way it's occupied. And accessory apartments used to be required because two families weren't allowed in certain districts, mm -hmm. and a small lot would only support a single dwelling unit. Well, now that the two dwelling units are allowed on a lot that only used to support one, it, it can be a two-family rather than an accessory apartment in a URC or URB district. In URA districts, um, the lots sizes, the allowance got smaller. Um, for the res, for the urban, I mean, for the rural districts, it's still, um, it still does require an accessory apartment. Um, so, but we are seeing there's been a steady uh, number of accessory apartments added to, to single family homes. Oh, yeah, families are very happy about it. And they, 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 there's an allowance for a single family, for an accessory apartment in, in a detached structure, needs a special permit from the um, zoning board. The, um, the fact that you can build two houses on a single <coughs> lot means that some of what used to be done as an accessory apartment now go as just a second house on the lot, and it goes in front of the planning board as for site plan approval as opposed to mm -hmm. a special permit from the um, zoning board. One thing that keeps people from converting garages to accessory apartments is that the as a dwelling unit needs to meet the setbacks for any other house in that district um, and a lot of garages didn't have those setback uh, are, are too close to the lot line but the idea was they don't want people to be able to 
create a dwelling unit that's right next to the lot line. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, thank you for all your hard work. And I hope that you do find somebody very knowledgeable. And you'll be all set having three hours. We, we, we uh, absolutely, we, we'll get somebody. Northampton is in the same way that um, people want to move here, people do want to work here also. It's, there's just some back and forth about the money. <laughs> So you just need an electrician, that's what you need? Somebody, a bunch of No, we need a, a, a building inspector who's who's good Knowledgeable at planning. Okay. That's what we need right now. That's the person that we most have, we have a place for. Okay. We're hoping to get a retired architect. That's the, that's the goal. Is that a full-time job? Mm -hmm. What, 35 hours a week? 40 hours. 40, and yours is what, 50, Four. 60? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, my, mine would be 40 if it wasn't, if we had, if there were more people, if we weren't so busy. And that's the piece that, that uh, uh, the activity that Northampton has in terms of permit numbers is what allows us to have that many uh, building inspectors. Are you on call mm -hmm. seven days a week? And we don't have none. none of the other inspector doesn't live close enough to be on call, so uh, we're we're working on some kind of a way to have somebody else on call. Yeah, I think that makes sense. But you know, Tony did it for years and years until I started. Tony did. It. So however many years that was. Well, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Right. Have a nice holiday. Oh, I will. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that just leads us to our uh, appointments. And so I'll ask if we can move on to the first on the list. Yeah, Council of the Marsh. Um, Julia. I had a very good talk with Julia on the phone, very, very pleasant. Um, she wants to thank us for considering her application to continue her service on the City of Northampton Parks and Recreation Commission. Um, she was first appointed in 2014, and she has found that um, her efforts with this group quite rewarding. Um, she currently serves as the Parks and Recreation Commission representative on the Community Preservation Committee. Um, she's a very strong advocate for recreational opportunities in our city, and she's a believer in the principles that underlie accessibility and availability of parks and open space to all our citizens. Um, she is hoping that we can sh that they can continue to strive toward achieving the benchmark measure of having a park that is within a 10 minute walk from every resident in our city and rec recreational facilities and programming that reaches all of our citizens needs. Okay. Would you like to offer a motion? I would like to offer a motion. Sorry. Uh, so, a uh, motion to send with a positive recommendation to the full city council, made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, <coughs> that passes. And uh, next we had a reappointment to the Agricultural Commission of Tim Smith. Um, I did speak with Tim. Tim is really um, on this commission as well as on the Energy and Sustainability uh, commission to uh, in his capacity as lands manager at Smith Book so he's been there for a number of years and uh, you know I mean that's a lot of land he manages between the agricultural and the forestry land um, and maintenance of all of that in the farm farm itself so um, uh, I told I just thanked him for his uh, being willing to serve it, it helps the city just to have his experience and somebody who is doing that public lands management on a daily basis uh, you know, on the city's Ag Commission 
and I would ask someone if they would. I'd make a motion to um, Sunday for City Council. Okay, moved and seconded for a positive recommendation to the full council. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that appointment passes. And then Councilor Bidwell? Uh, yes, I had a chance last week to talk with uh, Jonah Zuckerman, who this would be a reappointment. Um, <coughs> and he, he has found it this is sort of new to me, the fact that there's the municipal side of the, of the um, Congress Council for, for which he is the treasurer. And then there's the 501c3 side, the nonprofit organization. And he says as a consequence of that, accounting matters are a little bit confusing. So he, he wants to get reappointed in order to really dig in and try and improve the, 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 the situation which which he describes as having grown kind of kind of accounting despite Brian's uh, you know, very very good efforts and he's also wants to be part of the uh, ongoing transition of first night responsibilities of course which is a very very big issue for, for, for the Arts Council and this year um, Penny is is still involved as a, as a, as a consultant through this transition, so one of the main tasks of the whole Arts Council is to absorb all this <laughs> incredible years of institutional memory yeah. um, re 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 regarding first night. So everybody is excited about <coughs> first night under the under the, under the under the under the purview of the of the Arts Council. I'm a little nervous about it too, but anyway, yeah. he's he's very very much committed to working on all these all these issues and. Uh, wants and is glad he's up for reappointment. So I would recommend his reappointment. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to send with a positive recommendation to the full council. Jonah Zuckerman, uh, reappointment to the Arts Council. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that carries as well. Okay, and the last to see, um, I did attach on the new uh, business whether we <clears throat> um, the list of, of who we had for departmental presentations up until um, I mean the ones that came after the Veterans Council were actually I think we only heard at that point from um, police and fire uh, well, that brought us right into the uh, city clerk um, interim position that we spent. We had a couple of meetings that we were caught up and we didn't do any presentations, the th or at least a few meetings. So we're pretty much, I mean, we can add that we did police on this list. But I would imagine at this point, um, this might even be a discussion that might be better and you had with the new formulation after the committee, I mean the council reorganization in mm -hmm. January. Unless folks have other thoughts about that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I don't know, I mean I would hope that we're not going to, I don't know what happens if we get appointments referred to us um, in the next council meeting or two. Because um, I don't know if that'll require. Well, uh -huh. you know, uh, even if even if we were to get them in the next meeting, it would still push it off into January. January. So I don't know if that's so, just so matters that we have to continue on to the next council or how that how that works out. I mean, the committee will still exist even if the membership isn't technically determined, so they can still be referred. I guess it'd be a question in January whether. You know, at what point people are reappointed to the committee so that they can do that the committee can do its business right. with regards to those appointments. Right. Right. Um, so I guess well, we'll see. I mean, you don't know of any yeah. appointments. No appointments on this. Oh, okay. Okay. So that I would bet you there won't be other ones right. for for the uh, 70 or the 20th. Probably not. Right. So. All right. All right. So this. So this. Uh, the last meeting of this. This 
this at this cycle of the city council. Yeah. Thank the chair and all the members of the committee for a job well done. I didn't realize how many people all. we spoke to. And I, I, a lot of well, uh, I don't know how many. I mean, we must have done a hundred uh, more than that. 150 appointments. appointments. No. I mean, we did a lot of appointments because well, there were, there were meetings. We had 17 and 12. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So that's over two years. So. I know. But that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I'll ask if there is a final motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.